Alright, so we are going to start with what I believe several people have been waiting for, which is the Mirelurk Queen. To kick it off though, we're just going to start with the base. So, uh, this is because it's just much easier with the way she sits all over the base to get it done first and then come back. So, first we need to identify uh, what spots we're going to be painting what. There's a lot of detail on the base. So we've got this wood here, tire, a lot of eggs, a couple spawns, um, Nuka-Cola machine, and a barrel of some kind. And then lots of rocks. Another thing is... Uh, since the time I based this, this has taken a, looks like a little bit of damage, and some of the primer has come off. So first thing we're going to do is take some of liquid primer here and just go ahead and kind of dab that on in areas that have lost some. So we're just trying to fix those particular spots. That way we can get a good coating of paint down. <laughs> also look, make sure we don't have any hairs that are going to get trapped or anything like that. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead then and we're going to start with the more detailed objects first, uh, simply because it'll, since I'm going to do contrast paints on a lot of these, it's going to make it a bit easier to uh, go back after and fix any drippage. So. We'll start with the tire, so that's a pretty simple one. And we're just getting that nice black contrast on there. Inside. Also, I'm going to go ahead and do the <clears throat> glass section here of the Nuka-Cola machine's door. I tend to black out any windows or doors and the stuff that I do just to make it easier. Again, we're just trying to get our initial blocks of color down. Uh, we're going to skip the white for now because we need to wait for that black to dry. We don't want them to run together. So I've decided for the barrel, it's going to be a radiation barrel. So we're going to give it a coat of yellow and we will do detail on it uh, on the damage sections later. So again, that nice rich yellow color going down. I 
So this is I end in yellow again. And we'll add some rust marks, etc. after it's had a chance to dry. And this just gives us a real nice pop of color by having that yellow on there. Another nice colorful part <clears throat> will be the Nuka-Cola fragment of the machine. So we're using a Blood Angels red on this. And so we're just going to go in here. And we're, we'll see if we can get around the lettering a bit. But if we have to go back and redo it after, yeah, we will. Not a big deal. Now, obviously, all these colors are very vibrant and not as they should be for the base. Uh, so what we're going to do, as with all of them, is we'll darken it down with a... Agrax Earthshade wash at the end. But for now, we're just going to block all these colors in. I find it easier to start with bright colors and darken them down as needed, as opposed to the other direction. to pick out the Nuka-Cola words. Now for the wood. I use Gore Grunt of Fur for those. it gives a nice dark brown which is what I like for these planks that are just kind of sitting here And I don't have to be super careful, but I am trying to just pick these out. And with the detail that's on these planks, the contrast you can see really picks out the grain work. Queen will also be painting a lot of contrast. We'll be doing some blending of the various colors on the model even. 
but we're going to save that for next time. All right. There's the wood. So now we're going to go ahead and do the eggs. For the eggs, I'm going to take some skeleton hoard. Uh, and I'm going to also uh, take some contrast medium and kind of water it down a bit. I'm going to get, do 50-50, so it's four drops to four drops. Perfect, because what, what I want is this very slight brown without it being oh, too overpowering. There we go. Let's see the contrast goes right into that crack. the one that's cracked open here. Careful around the yellow. Don't, if it's still wet, we don't want to drag any of that color. not an egg that looks like the top shell of a Meyer Lurk, so we're going to paint that with a darker... Ah, there's a shell fragment. Just here next to this bit of hair there. shells. So onto the top of that Meyer Lurk. And we're just going to go with straight uh, Plague Bearer flesh.
also got these little bumps on it. What we're going to do with those, because we want to apply some kind of modeling, modeling effect on there. I'm going to take the skeleton horde straight as opposed to diluted. And I'm just going to kind of stipple it while it's still wet. So I don't need a huge amount. A bit more than that, though. Uh, and we're just going to these areas that have little bumps. We're just trying to work some of that brown in there. There we go. Just to give it some difference in color. And since it's, they're both wet, they'll blend nicely together. So you should have a good transition between the two. Meaning the brown won't super, super stand out. And you want it to stand out a little, but you don't want it to be garish. Yeah, so that gives a little spots of mottled brown there. Now, for the Mirelurk spawns, we've got uh, the ass end of one out of this egg, this one here, and that one there, and that one there. We're going to go ahead and do Plague Bearer Flesh again, but in this case, we are going to dilute it just like we did for the brown when we did the eggs. We don't want the color to be as rich as the top of that actual Mirelurk. Because these are younger, their carapaces haven't hardened, etc. Alright. Two. Four. So same thing. I'm going to do a 50-50. Shaking in between isn't about mixing the cut, the medium or the paint. It's about getting it back into that lip so you can easily drip it. Okay, so let's just start with the ass end of this one here. Yep, and see, it is, since we watered it down, a slightly lighter shade between the two. You should see it more when I do the one that's next to it. And we're not going to uh, enhance the shell on this one like we did the other one. We want these to be pale. As I said, their carapaces haven't solidified yet. There we go. And you can see definitely a much paler green. And if we did want to darken that up a bit we can always come back and do so. But that's what I wanted it to be so we're good. Come around these. Now the one in the egg, just have to be a little more careful with. We don't want to pull up that brown. That may still be a bit wet. We also don't want to leave any white. All right. There, 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 and good. Looking there, could do a bit more. Right in there as well. 
So just looking for any touch-ups that need real quick. And I think what I'll do is I'll take my watered brown and I will give it a little, very slight enhancement to the carapaces. So starting with the first one I did and just kind of stipple it into those areas. since this is the one that I diluted some shouldn't have as strong of an effect and there goes my dog oh my wife's dog I'm guessing either I'm getting a delivery or the neighbors coming or going Gives them a little, a little bit more color and depth. Yeah, that looks good. And as you're painting, don't be afraid to change your mind like I just did. Just because you start thinking one way doesn't mean you keep doing it. All right, so um, that black's dry, so let's just apply a bit of white on there. And then we can move to my standard basing colors. So contrast white is a bit of a misnomer. It's, as you can see, more of a, a very, very, very light gray. And that's so that it can give definition. Um, but it still, as you put it on, is very light. So It's just that since it's contrast, it's designed to kind of sink and bring out it's like there it's kind of gone into all of the ridges on the pull handle so I'm just going to apply a nice solid coat work it around a bit and so once I get the brown wash over everything it'll taper down that gray even a bit more so it's more white all right so that's all the contrast we're going to use on this done next up is going to be our standard uh, towel light ochre so we're just looking at where that needs to go. And so a little bit in there around here, uh, through here, yeah, lots of it going all over. I'm gonna start on this side where there's a very small amount of it though. Now it is getting a little dry, so I'm gonna just add water directly to it. mix in. I'll probably add more later. That's good to start for now. And so we're just going to go in here and start applying this in.
around the tire. getting it on the tire a bit. I'm not going to worry about it. The tire's been sitting in mud for 200 years. A little bit of fluff there. Uh, do, 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 do. Where, oh, where? There we are. As always, keep some tweezers handy. And take care of that immediately. So it doesn't get stuck. I guess the sheer amount of detail that they put into the these larger bases, the base for Liberty Prime was the same way. Lots and lots of detail. Had a ruined red rocket sign, and of course the ubiquitous Nuka-Cola machine. That one was a lot of fun to paint too. Now, here, we've kind of lost a bit of definition, but that's because the the queen's tail plugs in here, so that kind of flares out and blocks a lot of this. So we're kind of left to our own devices in order to kind of pick out where our color is going to etch out this stone here. So what I'm going to do is come at it from both directions to get an approximation of how I think it should join up. I'm just gonna leave it as that because once the tail is in there it's gonna block most all of that detail and I'm not painting into the tail hole because when I attach it that just means that that glue bond will be bonded to paint and what I'll actually do is take and scrape any paint out of the plug any primer to make sure that the resin is bonding to resin and not to uh, primer to primer kind of thing. It's always important to make sure that your miniatures material is bonding and not paint itself because obviously paint is able to just pull off the miniature very easily. I will seal this prior to working on the queen and it will get sealed again once the queen is attached uh, just to make sure that I get sealant into every section of the model that the queen may otherwise block. Alright. This is much, much larger than most of the bases we deal with. So it's going to take us a little more time to go in here and do all this. This rock and this rock are two separate, so let's pick out the dirt in between. Don't worry about riding up on the sides too much, because we will fix that when we paint the rock. Hmm. Alright, let's start coming around the other side. Obviously, the Meyerlick Queen is an intimidating opponent 
on the battlefield itself, it's also a great addition to an RPG game as your players are exploring a swamp or something like that and ha plop this down on the table for them to fight. I do like the RPGs and being able to integrate the miniatures. Unfortunately, not been able to do a lot of in-person gaming. My Thursday group, though, is actually getting back together face-to-face -face now that we've all been inoculated, etc. And things are calming a little bit down here in North Carolina. Still waiting on stores to open, but understandable they have yet to. There's still a lot of mandates and etc. But hopefully within the next few months, get back to some gaming in stores too. I don't want to undo all the work of the past year. All right, you can see that stone is being really separated out. So even down through here, this is all uh, dirt, basically, that's kind of piled up. So we're gonna come through here. down to these planks. Yes, all looking very good. When I apply the brown wash, I'm going to be avoiding the eggs and the spawns, I believe, because I, I, really, I like how they're looking right now anyway. Probably will go over the full grown Meyer Lurk though. Okay. Then this part here runs alongside this stone as well as our. Coca-Cola machine and wood. Alrighty. Okay. I've been painting with the brush for a while, so bit to clean it off. Don't want that paint to build up. And back to it. Oop. Providing I don't, excuse me, drop and break the thing. this in. Let's 
So at one point, all my creatures were actually painted. Then the Mirelurk wave came out. So really need to go ahead and finish all the Mirelurks. Along with a couple Super Mutants to have a fully painted Super Mutants again. And the second part of the Brotherhood of Steel wave as well. So I got like Maxon and what not to finish out of that. So those will probably be my focus after the Queen is just catching up factions I had completed that got additional models. Then we'll have to look at starting into say the Enclave. I'll get those done up. I still have Enclave Institute. Uh, survivors. Survivors are a pain because there's just so many of them. Um, especially since I got the resin upgrade. So some models I have two, three copies of. I do have the starter set itself painted. So that at least helps a little bit. Should really try and get a bunch more done before the NCR wave comes. Because I'm sure everyone's going to want to see those. Phone goes off in the background. Okay. Oop, had a bit of something on there. Expecting a delivery. Okay. Uh, all right. Nothing important. Do, do. Oh yeah, Mr. Mirelurk there thinks he's being all kinds of sneaky. But we know better if we've played the game, don't we? Alright. Come around 
here. So you can see now that we've got the you know almost the entirety of the ochre down. It really breaks up the base. I'm starting to see how all of the rocks and everything are laid out. painting these spawn on this particular base along with the eggs is a good test for when I do the actual spawn and egg bases that I have. last tiny bit here around the egg. Alright, so next up will be the gray, so just need to clean my brush. And we're going to start with the dark gray. And then we'll do some light gray dry brushing over the top. So we're going in with our dark gray, our necromancer cloak. Oh, and I need to refill my water real quick. And I'll go ahead and change out my paint water too. to refill my water bottle prior to starting. There we go. We're just going to start with the largest section here. You can tell it might be a little too watery by the way it's applying right there. You can see it pulling away. It could also be the primer is a little thin there. So that's the kind of thing you want to keep an eye out when you're painting. Let you know you might need to adjust your mix. But yeah, this little back and forth on that worked pretty well though. <laughs> so we'll just go through here, get all of this rock work done. Basically made up there to kind of 
kind of align everything. We may need to do a second coat of the gray since it is a bit thinner. But that's fine. It goes down nice and easy, that's what counts. lines. The brown wash will really help pick out the cracks and crevices on the rock. And this base is definitely going to benefit from having tufts scattered around it. Especially in these cracks of the stone where dirt would gather and plants would grow. I think that'll look really good. So much gray. Obviously, I wouldn't normally be holding onto this with my hand the whole time, but with a base this size, your options are limited. And since I'm really just gripping the sides and not the actual model. And the sides are so huge on this thing, it's not an issue. I mean, they're like a solid half inch or so. It's one of the things I actually liked with Liberty Prime. His base was even larger because it was so thick. I was able to install a lot of electronics into his base. I have some of my older videos on the channel show his construction and testing. It was a lot of fun. Something I like to do with larger models is wire them up a little, give them some pop. <laughs> Obviously, it wouldn't make sense for a Meyer Alert Queen to be wired up. There's not exactly any electronics associated. But for instance, War Machine, I have a Colossus that's wired with lights, etc. 
at one point was even going to have a working smokestack until I somehow broke the generator during installation. Alright. Finish up the last section of this. The largest of the rock. Now, a lot of spots on here, for instance, that gap there and there are for the claws to go in. I am painting those and I'm not actually going to worry about gluing the claws down. Um, the tail alone is large enough uh, and sufficient enough to be glued in. I may change my mind on that once I get pieces on. If it looks like glue would be appropriate, and then I'll just take a exacto knife and scrape away the paint first. But for now, that's why I'm not really bothered. All right, get this solitary rock. I think I'm really going to need to rinse my brush. Starting to run out of paint a bit. So I'm going to finish this up uh, with the gray real quick, uh, and we will rejoin uh, in just a couple. Okay, so uh, I did go back and hit the gray with a second coat. Now it's dried, you can see. Really, really helped there. Looks like a little spot of white, though. I'm trying to hide in a crack there. Probably an air bubble that popped, so just grab that real quick. And up against that wood there. Alright, that should all be good. Alright, so. First thing we're going to do now is fix the Nuka-Cola lettering. So just real easy. Uh, we're using uh, ivory. I always use an off-white. Just going to be very careful and just kind of pick the uh, words out here. good enough. So what's going to happen is when we apply the brown wash it'll fill in any of the missing gaps. All right, wash time. So I'm using uh, Agrax Earthshade. Uh, I'm back to using my gloss just because I'm trying to get rid of it. So we're just going to start slathering this on. And 
we're going to go around the critter here because we don't want our uh, egg pieces or the spawns to pick up any darker tones. It's fine if it kind of pools around them, we just don't want it pooling on them. Alright, tire inside the tire. Another favorite place of mine, I'll mention while I'm doing this, of putting tufts is inside tires like that. Um, turning them into planters, basically. <laughs> All right. Mm, yeah, I don't think I'm going to put any wash over our little soft shell buddy here. And you know what? I totally spaced and meant to apply dry brushing prior to this, which is fine, I haven't done any of the rocks yet, so I can still do that. Just trying to move around some of this excess. Alright, so real quick, I have some light gray here. Again, we're not thinning this because it's not needed. And we're going to whoop, throw a brush. Uh, we're going to use this dry brush, a little larger than some, because I'm trying to hit large spots here. But it is fairly stiff and has a nice pointed angle on there, which means I can avoid spots I don't want to dry brush. So coming through here, trying to hit the tops of this stuff, just trying to apply a little here and a little there, just to kind of make this rock work pop a little. You can actually just kind of push up against and do a circular motion like this on the larger rocks and flat areas. All right, and that's all I really wanted to do with that. And we'll see, I may do a second coat of dry brush if this gets too uh, washed out. But we will see. Now nah, that's going on pretty much the way I want, so that's good. I can still see the lighter gray where I want it. Oh yeah, in fact, on that it really brought out that light gray, I think. So I should not have to do that again. Hmm. So around, just noticed around the side of this guy, there's a lot of white there, but if I get wash in there, that should help cover that up. Not to mention it's not going to be oh, overly visible. That's why I hate these bottles. Fortunately there wasn't enough left in there to spill anything. But I have wasted entire bottles of Agrax and, or Nuln oil. Tipping them over like that. Filling in those cracks, etc. Want the 
large cracks to be dark. Now really get it into this old barrel and over the top of this Nuka Cola piece. And yeah, see there, as we apply it over, it really picked out the wording there. May need to do a second coat just to tone it down a bit. But for a first coat, it's looking good. And obviously we're gonna have to let this dry for a bit after. So we'll have to take another break. edges. Oof. Of course, it's all kind of float onto me, but that's fine. Alrighty. Alright, so we will let that dry. You can see, obviously because it's gloss, we got some shinies going on, but yep, looking good. So we'll come back, maybe do a bit more detail on that barrel, uh, add some exposed metal, that sort of thing, and then maybe uh, wash on a couple more spots. All right, so all of the wash has dried. So a little shiny, but that's because it's gloss, and that'll be taken out once we seal it. Um, still got some good highlight pieces. Nuka Cola looks good. I don't think I need another coat on that. So what we're gonna do now is take some metallic, just regular gunmetal gray. Well, gunmetal, not gray. And a small dry brush like this. And we're just going to apply it to that barrel. Um, we want to kind of focus in on where the cracks are. There's a couple holes there, so get those. Kind of around these edges a bit. Just kind of stippling this on. So you can see. All right. So that's good. Next, we want to apply some rust to that. The brown's good, but I want a little stronger. So I'm going to take my rust wash just a couple drips. I'm not doing a large area. I'm probably just done with one, but never do with one, you can do with two. this kind of drawing down a bit. We want to go over these indentations on it. There we go. Let's pull that down a bit. the 
edges there. That just adds a little bit more character to it. All right, so we just have to let that dry. While it's doing that, we'll go ahead and do the edging, which is a bit of an undertaking with a model this size. Uh, I don't do a pure black, but I like a darker gray than what my Necromancer cloak is. So we're just going to take some black. I say some, but a lot. And the Necromancer cloak. Pretty much trying to do a half and half there. And of course, some water. Mix it all together. Because we have a very large rim to cover here. I'm going to actually clean the brush off before using any of that paint real quick because it was getting up into the metal part. We don't want that. That's what causes brushes to split extremely easily. So, I know that my uh, barrel is a little wet right now, so we're going to try and avoid that. And we're just lightly holding my thumb in the middle. The wash, since it is a gloss, will have provided some protection, but we still want to limit how much time we keep our hand on any of the painted surface. So we're trying to basically just rest it mostly on my fingers on the underside and the palm of my hand as we just go ahead and do this edging bit. And this will probably take two coats as well, just like the rocks did, because this is a large, flat surface. And that's fine. There we go. Now, one thing is we are getting close to the painted rim getting to the palm of my hand. So obviously we don't want to just rub paint into the palm of my hand. So we're going to have to shift where we're holding it a little. Some resin holes here, but that's fine. It's just on the base. So we're just going to shift for how we're holding it so I can continue to go around without getting paint on myself. Make sure to fill in these holes with paint. around that edge. And already where we started is dried enough that we're just going to keep going in order to apply that second coat. Oh, right. 
round and round and round we go. us all caught up all right so we're gonna let that all dry and then I'll seal it and we were going to move on in next week's video to painting the Queen herself so we'll actually be doing that in two stages we'll see if we keep it to just one video though but we're gonna go ahead and kind of paint the underside and whatnot and then bring it up and probably leave the crown here to the last because I want to be able to uh, get the underpiece done and then mount her in. So she's gonna sit just like that. So you can see most of the hard work that we just did will still be seen. The uh, barrel, the Nuka-Cola machine, and the egg open with a spawn in it are visible there as are the uh, wood panels around back we can see the tire the half hidden guy as well as another spawn on the side we can see the spawn on the egg so they've done a really good job of positioning the uh, items on the base to where you'll still get to see them so it's well worth spending the extra time to go ahead and get those done and uh, so we're gonna finish sealing this like I said and we'll see you all next week for the uh, start of the Queen herself.